Hi, everybody. It's Wednesday, July 22nd, and it's Kim Bergen Jackson, administrator at Oaknell, bringing you the Wednesday COVID update. Uh, there's so much to talk about this week. Um, so Oaknell is doing well. No positive cases of the coronavirus in any resident or staff, which is great news as we're nearing, uh, I stopped counting how many weeks, but uh, very, very close to five months that we've been doing this. So bravo to everybody who's being careful. Uh, we did uh, make an announcement yesterday that we moved into phase two. You all should have received uh, the family update letter from me so that you sort of know what we're thinking about. Uh, there are not a lot of significant changes for phase two. It's just a stepping stone to get to phase three. Um, in phase two, though, we can have uh, medical providers, so non-essential health care providers, come back in. And for clarification, that's the podiatrist, the, um, the uh, McDonald eye people, the, the audiologist, our nurse practitioners, and some of your medical providers. And so uh, that's very exciting, I think. They will be required to screen in at the desk and they'll be required to wear PPE and provide their own PPE and everybody's aware of that. So they will be seeing you uh, with a face covering and a face shield. Um, that's just to prevent the virus from getting in. We've been very lucky. We do have the virus in a Johnson County community right now. Solon is on the website. So I'm not making an announcement that isn't already public knowledge, but Solon Retirement Village uh, had an outbreak start on Sunday. So it is possible for the virus to get into our communities and we just have to continue to be vigilant and um, protect each other. I have received some questions this week about face shields versus face masks and what's appropriate to wear. And so I just wanted to give you a clarifier on that. If you're out uh, outside or if you're out in the community and you can be six feet away from other people, um, like walking outside, you can wear just the face shield. If you're walking indoors at Oak Knoll and you don't anticipate that you'll be closer, then uh, if you don't anticipate you'll be closer than six feet with anybody for longer than 15 minutes, then you can just wear the face shield. Um, it would be really important if you're going to Walmart or if you're going to the grocery store or anywhere in public where you find you might be in close quarters with a bunch of other people who may or may not be wearing face coverings, uh, I would wear the mask or I would wear both. So. The face shield protects you from anything getting in. The face mask protects them from anything getting out. So that's sort of the difference between the two. I do find that the face shields are cooler, but they're cooler because there's more of a space that's open down here around the neck area. So um, if you have more questions about that, you can always reach out to me, but I would say Face shield if you're going to be distanced from people, face mask if you're going to be close, and both if you feel like you don't know what's coming next. That leads me to talk about restrictions in the different levels of care. So currently, if you're living in independent living, there are no restrictions about you going out. Um, there are no restrictions about you going out of town. There are no domestic travel restrictions right now. We've been following the CDC guidelines for that. And so if you want to go to see your kids in um, Nebraska, let's say, you can go to Nebraska, you can come back, and you are not required to self-quarantine. You can go to the grocery store and come back, and you're not required to self-quarantine. Um, if you were... Uh, Flying domestically, there are, not, there are not any restrictions for that either, but I would be mindful if you're flying about the space that you're in, that's pretty close quarters for a long period of time. You're certainly gonna be sharing air with people that you don't know. Um, so that's independent living. In the health center and assisted living, they're still not able to go anywhere without the 14 day uh, isolation or, or quarantine in their rooms when they get back. So that's for medical appointments, uh, trips to the emergency room, um, any, and for any reason that they're going out. So the difference in the levels of care is the, diff the, uh, the amount of regulation that we have. Now having said that, we're all going to move through these phases together, not because we want to uh, 
restrict your movements based on the restrictions for the health center and assisted living. But as I've said before, you're all at risk for this virus and you're all in the older adult age range, which puts you at more risk. So even if you're super healthy uh, and very active and very vigilant with your PPE, you're still at risk for catching this virus if you're out and about. So just be careful, um, continue doing what you've been doing because we, we can celebrate our successes so far, five, almost five months in, four and a half months, I should say. So I think that's all I have to say about that. I brought a cheat sheet today because there's so many things to talk about. Um, I don't know if you saw yesterday that Mayor Bruce Teague uh, announced a mask mandate for Iowa City. Uh, there is no mandate for Coralville or North Liberty, but I think everybody's talking about that. The governor has said that she won't allow these um, ordinances to stand, but there's no current litigation in process. And so if you're out in Iowa City, you're required to wear a mask. Uh, that He did the announcement with a face shield on so people could see his face. So it's just a face covering. If you prefer your face shield, that's fine. Uh, you should see more and more people wearing them. Walmart is mandating the masks. Hy-Vee is not, but Hy-Vee is giving them out for free. So there's some degree of face coverings all over town, I hope you see. Uh, he put that ordinance into effect until September 15th and reserved the opportunity to extend it if he needs to. So what we're trying to do right now is to get to phase three for Oak Knoll so that we can have limited visitation for everybody at Oak Knoll from their family. I won't go into what the details will be about that. I'll save it for my next video for phase three, but we need to spend two weeks in phase two. And so that's part of the reason we went to phase two. The other thing that we need to think about is the students are coming back, right? So uh, as far as I know, the University of Iowa is still planning to have classes per normal. That means the students will be back and ready to go to school August 24th. And so approximately two weeks from that, I uh, expect to see an increase in the cases in Johnson County. So we'll just need to take it day by day and see how things go. Um, still true that the largest population of growing positive cases in Johnson County is that 18 to 40 age range, uh, which is not, uh, doesn't apply to you in your age range, but it is the entire, almost the entire service group uh, age range of people that would be working in retail, restaurants, bars, and Oak Knoll. So <clears throat> just need to be vigilant in our use of PPE and take care of each other. I'm very proud of everybody here at Oak Knoll, and I can't say enough about all the staff who have been careful at Oak Knoll and have been careful out in the community when they're not at work. So if you're passing a staff person in the hallway, it doesn't matter who they are or what department they're in, please give them a shout out for, uh, for being responsible and caring about you um, because you're our priority right now to, to keep you safe and well during this pandemic. And hopefully uh, we'll see things change in the coming months. Um, I think uh, two more things. Uh, look tomorrow for a traveling snack cart. We're starting something new. I don't want to release too much information, but it's something fun and exciting that will go door to door. Uh, starting tomorrow. So it's not my idea and it's not my project, but it is exciting. So there's that. And the last thing I want to talk about today is accommodating everybody. So I know there is a group of you who are ready to get back to normal and ready to get out into the world and, and just have life as it was before. And there's a group of you who are very, very afraid to leave your apartments. Um, and risk any exposure to the virus at all. And I think most of us fall into the middle category where we worry about some things and don't worry about others. So for those of you who are really worried about the virus, I want you to know that um, we hear you and we hear your concerns and we will continue to do the groceries. We'll continue to do trade delivery and we'll continue to do everything that we can uh, to make the Oak Knoll space a safe space for everybody that lives here. So um, I'll reiterate that you can reach out to me anytime. I prefer email, but I also will answer my phone. If you have any questions, doesn't matter what it is, send me a question and I'll get an answer to you. Otherwise, um, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, say hi to your neighbors, take care of each other, and I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.